peace? Never. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 pop culture debates that will rage on forever. For this list, we're looking at iconic debates pertaining to popular culture that have been raging for years and show no signs of slowing down. Number 10. Who's the best doctor? Oh, Berlin. Since this wildly inventive sci-fi series kicked off in 1963, we've seen 13 actors play the doctor across hundreds of episodes and numerous specials of Doctor Who. Do I become you? Well, there's a few false starts, but you get that in the end. Of course, that's not even counting actors who briefly played the doctor, like David Bradley and John Hurt. Well, this has all the makings of your lucky day. With so many memorable performances, the inevitable discussion as to who's the best doctor is like a royal rumble. Gentlemen, I have had 400 years to think about this. I've changed my mind. Though there are some clear standouts, there's no obvious winner. And with no end to the series in sight, we suspect the discussion will only grow more intense with each subsequent casting. Oh! Oh, oh, I'm getting that too. That is brilliant. Number nine, Angel versus Spike. When it comes to Buffy the Vampire Slayer's status as an icon, there is no doubt. I love you. I try not to, but I can't stop. Me, me too. But as to which vampire lover was right for her, that is highly debatable. Just kiss me. When fans met Angel, it was love at first bite. But then the once villainous Spike became romantically entangled with our heroine, and many fans changed their shipping status to Team Spike. Honestly, we suspect this boils down to each fan's personal taste. Do you prefer damaged and brooding, or a bad boy with a soft streak? While the series is over, this debate is anything but. Number eight, the big question. Happy birthday, baby. <laughs> Get in. Viewers always care about who the main characters walk off into the sunset with when a series comes to its conclusion. But with Sex and the City, a show where relationships, both platonic and romantic, were central, fans couldn't have possibly been more invested in Carrie's love life. Carrie, you're the one. finale, all signs point to a life with Mr. Big, which was then complicated twice by the films. Carrie, I freaked out for a minute, but I'm ready now. But this back and forth reflects the exact same uncertainty that plagues fans, long after the show's conclusion. Is Mr. Big Carrie's Mr. Right or not? Aiden certainly complicates things, for Carrie and fans alike. Number seven, Hermione and Ron or Harry? Fine, I get it. I saw you two the other night. Ron, that's, that's nothing. Ron! For every Hermione fan that felt that Ron just wasn't good enough for her, J.K. Rowling's public feelings of regret about putting them together must have felt like serious validation. Now, despite online clickbait to the contrary, the author never stated that Ms. Granger should have married the boy who lived instead. Of course, that hasn't stopped fans from aggressively voicing that opinion. You are nothing. 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 But hey, Team Ron isn't without its own supporters. After all, opposites do attract. As arguably the biggest fiction series ever published, and one that shaped a generation of young minds, this coupling will continue to be discussed for decades. Number six, Pacey versus Dawson. Remember that? Sorry, is the show called Pacey's Creek? Why does he get to swoop in and get the girl? Then again, as an aspiring filmmaker, surely our titular capesider can appreciate the need to subvert such well-worn tropes. I needed a partner, so... So... <laughs> Why'd you ask Pacey? Why don't you just ask me? Pacey came to me first. 
In the classic late 90s series Dawson's Creek, we got a teen soap opera love triangle for the ages. One that really made viewers feel conflicted and often frustrated. I love you. You know that. But it's very real. Personal dramas and secondary romances aside, this was the fuel that drove the series from season 3 through season 6. Though Pacey and Joey wind up together, there's an alternate reality with just as many supporters in which Dawson gets the girl. The point is you can't control those feelings, Joe. Even if they're wrong, they're there. They're always there. You can understand that, can't you? Number 5. Was there room for Jack? James Cameron's groundbreaking 1997 romance disaster film proved to be the biggest thing since the actual Titanic. You're right now. With a staggering worldwide gross, countless iconic scenes, and then unprecedented special effects, it gave people plenty to talk about for years to come. But you know what people are still hung up on? Whether or not Jack had to die. Mythbusters weighed in on the issue, declaring that the door could have supported them both had Rose just put her life vest underneath it. 80% of my body is out of the water and in the air. Yeah, same here. If we can hold this sort of stationary, I think we're golden. James Cameron, for his part, disagreed, saying Jack was destined to die. For fans, however, there is still a lifetime to debate these conflicting arguments. So maybe we screwed up and the board should have been a little tiny bit smaller, but the dude's going down. Number 4. Star Wars vs. Star Trek But it's not real. It's just a computer-generated fantasy. There are plenty of sci-fi fans out there who enjoy both franchises. But even among open-minded and diplomatic fans, everyone has a favorite. Only Imperial stormtroopers are so precise. Then you got the hardcore fans, for whom the differences are just too glaring, and the feud too far gone for peace to ever be achieved. Humor! I love it! <laughs> One apparently has to be better, and there are those out there who are only too happy to fight it out in the trenches. May the force be with you. Thankfully, for every throwdown between phasers and lightsabers, there's a lighthearted, fun-loving chapter in the conflict, like the hilarious back and forth between Carrie Fisher and William Shatner. Star Wars was special effects. Number 3. Were Ross and Rachel on a break? We were on a break! But they were on a break! Or were they? In this sitcom of unprecedented popularity, which many of you are probably still re-watching on Netflix for the umpteenth time, there were a lot of laughs and a decent amount of interpersonal drama to keep viewers invested. While Ross and Rachel had their ups and downs over the years, years after the fact, and despite the couple having gotten their happy ending, fans are still dissecting this episode and its fallout. Oh, maybe we should just take a break! Countless articles have been published in support of each side of the argument, but we sincerely doubt consensus will ever be reached. You know, I can't believe I even thought of getting back together with you. We are so over. <laughs> Fine by me! Number 2. Disney vs. Pixar Life isn't some cartoon musical where you sing a little song and your insipid dreams magically come true. So let it go. To be fair, Disney has seriously upped its game with 3D animated offerings like Moana, Zootopia, and Frozen. But ultimately, as far as this pop culture debate is concerned, it really comes down to classic Disney versus Pixar. Buzz, you're flying! This isn't flying, this is falling with style. <laughs> to infinity and beyond! Sure, they both operate under the Disney banner, but as any committed Disney or Pixar fan will tell you, the types of stories told by these two distinct studios are quite different. You took the heart for them. You did everything for them. So they'd love you. It was never enough. Now, many fans do enjoy the cinematic offerings of both companies. But at the end of the day, they all seem to have a favorite. And they're only too happy to explain to you why. You can't change nature. Change is nature, Dad the part that we can influence. And it starts when we decide. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I'm Batman. Goodbye, Jacob. No, you don't speak for her. Go get out of here. Get down. It's finally time for me to break my silence. I see white and gold. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pepsi vs. Coke What? I wanted a Pepsi. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Ew. The world has weathered more than its fair share of long-running conflicts, but few have had the sort of longevity experienced by the Cola Wars. It might die down for a couple of years, but it never truly ends. And there is always another big marketing battle on the horizon. This is the test. Pepsi versus Coke. The Pepsi Challenge. Pepsi. And all across America, more people pick Pepsi. Pepsi. Time Pepsi. after time after time. Pepsi Cola. Though these competitors had subtly been going after each other dating back to the 1930s, Pepsi's Pepsi Challenge in the 1970s arguably ushered in the age of maximum fan involvement, prompting cola drinkers to pick a side and defend it whenever one of the two companies came up. When the time comes, which do you reach for? Pepsi. For those who think young. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.